So as you can see from this, last, uh, from this recent session, trainees are a vital part of our community. To celebrate the next generation of neuroscience and the programs we have developed to support these young scholars, we have another video which has uh, at least one familiar face in it. When we think about cultivating the next generation of scientists who are going to transform our understanding of brain function and human understanding and health, we also want to think about creating a fertile environment where individuals who are curious about these questions can get engaged regardless of where they are in their life stage. We have programs that we've created for undergraduates here at Stanford, for undergraduates at community colleges in our local area here in the Bay Area, for PhD students with individual fellowships and programs that are actively bringing in students with interest in engineering and computer science into the neuroscience arena and with postdocs who are individuals who have received their PhDs and are on a trajectory towards establishing their own independent research programs. When I was a sophomore, I was able to participate in the Wusai Neuroscience Undergrad Research Opportunity Fellowship that's hosted inside the Institute. Uh, and I was really able to sort of become part of a larger community a good example of that would be getting involved in one of the community labs here at the Neuroscience Preclinical Imaging Laboratory. That was an opportunity I found out through USAI. And it was nice to be able to talk to some of the postdocs and grad students to try and prepare a grant application for that. And when we were successfully awarded, it was really nice to have the people at USAI like guide us through and teach us how to do that. The NeuroCC program is a program that invites community college students such as myself to work in research labs. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer and I was treated at Stanford, but it really impacted me. I had to learn how to walk properly again. I had brain fog. Two years later, I'm here at Stanford doing research. It's great to be around so many people with similar goals and it's inspired me to work towards a future I didn't think I can have. I was fortunate enough to receive the Wusai Neuro Interdisciplinary Graduate Fellowship, which has enabled me to work with several different mentors in the community. And that's been great because whenever I have a problem, whatever, whatever the specific subfield, I know who to turn to, whether it's machine learning or neuroanatomy or computational neuroscience problems or experimental design problems, I know which mentor I can go to specifically for that. It's been great to be part of the MBCT community. As a neurotech trainee, we attend once a week seminars um, and these have usually have guest speakers that are in neurotech in some context, whether it's industry or policy and regulation or research both at Stanford and outside of Stanford. It's really cool to be exposed to all these different potential career paths. One of my favorite parts about the Interdisciplinary Scholars Program is the mix of different backgrounds that we all have. So I come from a genomics background, and actually through the fellowship, I started a new collaboration with Ernie Juan, who's a neuroscientist, and together we've been using single cell sequencing and more traditional electrophysiological characterizations to learn about uh, learning and memory in the octopus brain. Being a postdoc at Stanford can be very isolating. It's a very large place. So being part of the Interdisciplinary Scholars Program has really helped to make me feel integrated in the neuroscience community, but also just as a postdoc at Stanford in general. The Wusai Neuroscience community has not only supported my scientific growth, but also my career and personal growth. I've had the opportunity to be a part of a Pathways to Neuroscience program, and this program really supports trainees who are typically underrepresented in the neuroscience community, and it's given me a lot of resources, uh, such as a peer support group, to talk through personal and career issues. These different programs all together offer a very comprehensive support in both personal and scientific aspirations. 
As a postdoc, I was one of the originating members of the Diversity, Inclusion, Belonging, Equity, and Justice Committee here in the Institute. As part of this initiative, we realized early on that there was really a lack of a space for our trainees from historically marginalized identities in the U.S. and especially in science to build community with each other and to learn from each other about the unwritten rules of navigating a career in academia. And so I, with five other grad students, co-founded an organization called Belong that's entirely trainee-led but has the Institute's funding and administrative support which has been really critical to our success so far. I hope that our work with Belong so far is just the start of a commitment from the neurosciences community to take the burden off of marginalized trainees to implement the changes that we'd like to see to their everyday day-to-day -day experience in science by enabling their ideas for those changes, but providing them with the financial and logistical support to actually implement those changes. Neuroscience is made better by courage and bravery. The programs that we've built in, at the Woodside Institute for trainees help to cultivate those characteristics and also to encourage everyone to bring their entire experience with them into the laboratory. I'm so inspired by the ways in which we've been able to achieve those goals and the impact that these programs will have today and tomorrow through our trainees as they move forward with their current research and their future careers. Each year at the symposium, we have the honor, um, uh, we honor the top trainee-led research papers through the Sammy Quo Award. Um, I'll start with a short background on Sammy Kuo and this award in his honor, and then Kang Shen will give out the awards. So Sammy Kuo was born in Taipei, Taiwan in 1984 to parents Yao Qi and Li Ling Kuo. In 1996, when Sammy Kuo was 12 years old, he was diagnosed with a rare inflammatory disease associated with measles virus. His family cared for him at home until he passed away in 2006 at the age of 22. After his passing, his cousins Peggy and Amy, who were Stanford graduates, contacted the Neurosciences Institute and the Sammy Quo Memorial Scholarship Fund was established to support basic research in neuroscience. The opportunity allowed the family to memorialize Sammy and recognize crucial neuroscience research that one day might help cure other children. This award has become truly prestigious, and though born of sad beginnings, it is truly a celebration that highlights and recognizes exceptional early career papers. We're now in the 16th year of this award, and you can see really amazing um, folks now who are kind of like a who's who in neuroscience. Um, so uh, now Kong will give out the awards for this year. Um, and just a brief moment to thank the selection committee um, and the staff who make this award happen. So thanks to Jun Ding, Julia Kaltschmidt, Paul George on the postdoc selection committee, Jaoki Chen, Megan Albertelli, and Elizabeth Mormino on the Grad Student Selection Committee. And thanks to Zulema and Chiara, who work behind the scenes. Go ahead. Thank you. So it's my pleasure to um, introduce this year's winners. Um, so we have two categories. We have the graduate students and then the postdocs. I'm going to do the graduate students first, starting from two honorary mentions and then the third place, second place, and the winner. And I will repeat that for the postdocs. So I guess I, I'm not sure if the students are here and they're all lined up here. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so the first honor, uh, honorable mention uh, is Daniel Liu from Irv Wiseman's lab. And uh, Daniel uh, studied, de developed, sorry, maybe I will, um, I will, okay, great. So I will basically use a couple of sentences to summarize the, the paper and, uh, and then uh, congratulations. Uh, so Daniel developed a uh, method to purify um, human neuron stem cells and progenitors and characterize them. Congratulations, Daniel. So this, uh, the second honorable mention uh, goes to Lori Deshorvitz uh, from the Kautzmith lab. So Lori's paper established, uh, described the enteric nervous system patterning in human preterm babies and established the first ex vivo assays of the function in an intact human fetus organ. Lori. Congratulations. 
The third place uh, graduate award goes to Alex Googly Tino and uh, from the Chichiniski lab. And I think Alex is not here. But what Alex did, did in this paper was that uh, he uh, found a way to determine the, the precise electric stimulation that can be used to reconstitute vision with high precision in the central retina. So this is a part of the, uh, the artificial retina project. Very um, exciting work. Congratulations to Alex. So the second place for the graduate uh, uh, award goes to Sofia Asenian Perez from Tom Sudoff's lab. So Sofia single-handedly discovered a new role for the very famous gamma secretase in regulation of synaptic function through the modulation of cholesterol metabolism in human neurons. This is quite surprising. Congratulations, Sofia. So now, drum rolls. <laughs> so the winner for this year's um, um, graduate award goes to John Vaughn from Tom Clendenin's lab. So John uh, worked on a lipid catabolism kinase, uh, enzyme, uh, and his surprising finding is that uh, this enzyme not only is involved in aggregate formation uh, in neurodegenerative diseases, but also controls neuride growth through the regulation of memory insertion. Congratulations, John. And so now we're going to the, the postdoc awards. The first honorable mention goes to Simon Haziza from Mark Schnitzer's lab. Simon's groundwork, uh, breaking work introduces a new technology for fluorescence optical voltage imaging uh, of memory uh, voltage activities in awake behaving flies and mammals. Congratulations. Um, this, the second honorable mention uh, is from uh, Nirao Shah's lab, Yi Chao Wei. Yi Chao's work, so cool. <laughs> uh, so uh, there, there was the, the long belief that oxytocin is this wonder, wonderful uh, uh, hormone um, that is responsible for the social interaction uh, the pairing in, in, the, in the monogamous vowels, and then we read this paper, we did it for our journal club, and he made a knockout in the vowels and to show that it's not the case. Uh, uh, paradigm changing. Congratulations. <laughs> the third place for the postdoc award goes to Matthew um, Palm Renz from Rob Malinka's lab. Matthew's paper, detailed a novel mechanism underlying the sociability deficit that occurs during prolonged opioid withdrawal. And this work has direct relevance to the development of a novel medication for treatment of addiction. Congratulations, Matthew. So this year's second place postdoc award goes to Yongjin Yu from Maris Wernick's lab. So Yong Jun's work uh, developed a hematopoietic cell therapy to restore the TRAM2 function by microglia replacement in mice. And this work has exciting implications for neurotherapeutic neurother revenues for AD, Alzheimer's disease. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, this year's winner for the postdoc award goes to Oliver Hahn from Tony Woods Corey's lab. Oliver has developed a new method in mouse brain uh, to very systematically collect cells and in an unprecedented depth and, uh, and, and breadth using uh, spatial transcriptomics and single cell uh, nuclei sequencing, he demonstrated that the importance of spatial locations as a, mod uh, as a modulator for gene expression in aging brains. Congratulations, Oliver. <laughs> so, Please join me again in congratulating all the Sammy Qual awardees. And again, thanks for the, the staff members to, uh, to run this award. Um, 